So a few years ago, I made a tutorial about how to export images from Lightroom for the web. And it's been a pretty popular video since like 2018, but I wanted to make an updated version because there was something that I missed in that. And it was to make smaller image formats where you don't actually lose any quality. So that's exactly what we're gonna to cover today. Let's hop right into it. So we're inside of Lightroom. I have two different images here. I have a horizontal image as well as a vertical image. I've already gone in, I've done my edits, I've done my cropping, now I'm ready for exporting. So what I'm gonna do is make sure both of these images are selected or however many that you have in your case. We're gonna to go to File and we're gonna to go to Export. Now the first thing you're gonna have here is your export location. Pretty simple and self-explanatory, just make sure it's going to wherever you want it to go. File naming, if you want to, go ahead, I leave that alone. We don't need the video settings, but let's jump down to the file settings. So I export my images as a JPEG because it's traditionally accepted on most every single website you're gonna upload it to and your social media platforms, your apps, etc. JPEG's just a good way to go. Now the quality I set to around 70, my color space is usually always sRGB and I don't click on limit file size too. Now you can do this if you wanna go this route, but here's how I do it. So if you go down to image sizing, again, make sure that your resolution is set to 72 pixels per inch. If you go to resize to fit, select long edge, set it to 1920 pixels, you're gonna have a pretty good size image both as far as not being too big in the file size, as well as big enough to project a nice quality on a website or social media app. So let's go ahead and export these. You would just click export, but I've already done that because I wanna show you the difference between these particular images. So this first image here, I exported with those smaller settings I was just telling you about. And the second image, I didn't use those resize settings. So if we open up the second image here, you're gonna see that it's 9.2 megabytes. Now there's a lot of websites out there, including things like Twitter, and I think even YouTube is this way as well, where if your image file size is over five megabytes, you cannot even upload it. So you're gonna to have to go back in and make this smaller, some way, shape, or form, Anyhow, so there's no point, this image is basically useless. And if you try to upload a file size this large to a website, especially like a blog post, it's gonna have a lot of different images. It's gonna make that page take longer to load and that's something that Google doesn't like, which is gonna affect your SEO. But now let's look at the one that I resized. 846 kilobytes, so not even one meg. So this other file is nearly nine times bigger than this original one. Now if we took both of these files we open them in the preview app here. You're not gonna be able to tell the difference between which one is a smaller file size versus which one is the bigger file size. So I'm gonna go kind of full screen here. I'm on a 32 inch 4K monitor and I can tell you that when I cycle back and forth between these two, I don't see any difference whatsoever. There is no loss of quality considering this is like less than a meg and this is over nine megabytes. So that is a few reasons why that I like to export smaller file sizes. One, web pages load faster. Two, save space on your hard drive. Three, it's really not needed to make them bigger unless you wanna start printing. And that's pretty much it. I think something that a lot of us fail to do and I failed to do in my original tutorial was to export these smaller file sizes. Because I can't tell you how many times clients have sent me images through our digital asset management systems and then I download the files hoping I can just put them straight into a website or share on social media and the files are just too big. Then I have to add in that extra step of opening them in Lightroom or Photoshop or something else to export and we just don't wanna do that. But if you found today's video helpful, be sure to check out some of my other videos. I'm gonna link one here. This should be the best for you to watch. But if you wanna watch more on Lightroom, Photoshop, be sure to check out my playlist. And uh, yeah, hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully this helps you out in your future editing and saves you some hard drive space. But if you did enjoy today's video, be sure to leave a like. And as always, be sure to create something new today.